I do like this. Hello! So this is a new kind of video for me. I am, <clears throat> as you can tell by the uh, title, I am doing a Hobonot, Hobonichi unboxing. This is the first time I've ever ordered from Hobonichi or the first time I've ever even had a Hobonichi planner. Um, but before I get into that, I want to go over a few reasons or a few things that I wanted to talk about before I start unboxing the Hobonichi. So I am not new to the Japanese planner world. Um, oops. My first, uh, well, not my, not my first planner or my first journal, but this is from 1991. Uh, and I bought it in Japan when I lived there. It's nice that the paper cover is the same as the actual hardcover. And I didn't use this a whole lot. I did use it some, but, um, you know, I just sort of, when I was in Japan, I was extremely busy with work all the time, um, often for 48 hours straight kind of thing. So I was in the military, so um, I just didn't have a lot of time to write in it. <clears throat> but I still have it. And I don't even know who made this planner. I don't know what the company name is. Um, I actually tried to look up the ISBN number, but it doesn't come up with anything. But that doesn't surprise me because it's from 1991. Um, like typical Japanese planners, it has uh, has a content section, uh, has a schedule section. Um, and then it's an undated one. So you just write the dates in as you go along. And it has a lot of stuff in the back, um, which I have no idea what most of it is because I don't read... I don't read Japanese, <clears throat> but uh, I loved uh, the stationery stores in Japan. They just amazed me. I still have pens um, in the packages still that I bought in Japan because I bought like four or five of them and I've used, um, you know, I've used like three of them and I've still got two left or, or something like that. But uh, it's got these symbols. I do recognize the wool and the cotton one. I don't know what the rest of these are. They're obviously uh, symbols from Japan. It's got the age, figuring out how old somebody was, based on what year it is, or when they were born, rather. Anyway, <clears throat> so that was my first uh, Japanese planner. I actually used a Japanese planner last year. Um, this is a pocket diary. It's from... Um, see if I can get this name right. It's from Takahashi Shoten. Takahashi Shoten. And I really actually did like it, do like this. Um, I used it off and on throughout the year. I think the nice thing about it is that um, if you look at it closely, I don't know if you can see these, but there's dots along the top and then dots along the bottom and you can draw lines. Uh, to make up to four columns per page if you want. Um, and this has been handy. You know, I can just throw it in my bag or whatever. I tend not to, though. I tend not to carry it around. And uh, so, yeah, it's nice that it came with a, um, a plastic cover. Um, and my problem is, is that over the years I've also done a lot of different stuff for actual journaling. Um, so I've kind of flipped around different ways. I've, you know, I've used, you know, I've used travel journals. I've used, um, you know, and this is just my daily journal. Um, I've used travel journals, like I said, a, a traveler's company journals. Um, at one point in time, I just did strictly watercolor, and I, you know, did little watercolor sketches with a little bit of journaling. And at one time, I actually made my own uh, sort of traveler size journals. And uh, recently, I've gone back to, I had used this a while ago. This is an Exceed. They're fairly cheap. It's the cream paper with the dot grid. 
and I've gone back to using this uh, for this is today and tomorrow. I've gone back to using this for my journaling. Um, but you know, again, two books, a journaling book and a planner book. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. I just didn't want to have two different books anymore. So I felt like, uh, going back, going to, uh, a different type of planner, uh, might be a better idea. So I, excuse me, um, but I was on Amazon, and I'm going to talk about Amazon in a minute because they just annoy the heck out of me. Uh, Amazon socks, plain and simple. But I was on Amazon looking up this one uh, for two, 2024, and I put it in my my wish list because you know I just wasn't I wasn't ready to order it yet. <clears throat> but I found it, you know, the same one, and I was going to order it. And the very next day, because you know how all the Everything connected with your phone is like spying on you all the time. The very next day on YouTube, I had all these recommendations for Hobonichi unboxing videos. Now, I have no idea why, because even on Amazon, I did not look at Hobonichi. I just looked, um, I just looked for this one. So I don't know why I had all these suggestions for Hobonichi unboxing videos but I watched a couple of them and then I went down that rabbit hole but in the process of going down that rabbit hole I realized that the Hobonichi cousin was probably the answer to my problem um, with the monthly and the weekly I could do planning you know task lists that kind of things I don't really plan much I just do task lists and I usually do them that morning um, and the daily section could be my journal. And I thought, okay, well, I'll look at that then. So I looked at one on Amazon and it was like 60 something dollars. I thought, that's insane. I'm not paying that much money for a, you know, a, a planner. I, that, that's just crazy. Um, in the process of watching all these unboxing videos, uh, there were a few people that mentioned that the items were much cheaper on the Hobonichi website, but you had to pay shipping, yada, yada, yada. And I thought, well, you know what, at least it's going to be faster than Amazon because Amazon is slower than cold molasses going uphill in January. And um, I'm actually fed up with Amazon. I am not a Prime member anymore. Haven't been for uh, since March. March, beginning of March was when my uh, subscription expired and I did not renew it. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, we're going to stop right here for just a second because I want to add this one comment about Amazon. So when I ended my subscription with Amazon, in that process of, of canceling my subscription, not once in any of that process was there ever a question from Amazon about why I was canceling, why I was not happy. Not only that, I never received any kind of email after I canceled, like as some sort of survey, like, why did you cancel? I have never, ever canceled any kind of online subscription thing, even just email subscriptions, that they haven't asked why I was canceling. Even if it was something as simple as checking a box, I received too many, I'm not interested anymore, whatever. Amazon has never asked and doesn't give a shit why I cancel my subscription, which is another reason why I'm fed up with Amazon, because they really don't care about customer service. They don't give a shit, they take forever, and I'm just done with them. So I thought, well, that Hobonichi cousin looks like it might be the, the best idea for me. So I went to the Hobonichi website and found that, yes, indeed, they are much cheaper. Um, and the shipping was expensive, but I know it would be a whole lot faster than Amazon. Um, to go back to Amazon, for example, I ordered, <clears throat> I ordered these, uh, I ordered the Hobonichi from the Hobonichi website on the 12th of October. On that same day, 12th of October, I ordered some things from Amazon that were also journal related. Um, today is October 18th. My Hobonichi order arrived today. It was delayed three days because of customs in Anchorage, Alaska. So a hint here for you, if you are ordering for the Hobonichi website, and I know I'm really, really late in the game, so probably nobody is ordering anymore at this point. 
you know, the whole launches and everything all happened ages ago. Um, if you order any kind of pens that have a liquid in them, um, not, not like a ballpoint pen, but you know, like a fountain pen or, you know, that has an ink cartridge, even though it's not installed, um, apparently that triggers something with customs and there's supposed to be some form that's filled out by the shipper. Um, but Hobonichi isn't doing those for some reason. And I don't know if that's just uh, a problem this year because it's my understanding from watching different videos that they used a shipping company this year instead of doing the shipping themselves. And um, so I don't know if it was, if that's the problem or what, but I eventually contacted FedEx because FedEx didn't tell me anything other than on my tracking that it was held up. They didn't, you know, they said it was held up for customs because of possible hazardous material and they didn't contact me. I mean, I had signed up for FedEx to track this package. So they had my email address, but they never contacted me. I finally contacted them uh, because you only have like 10 days and then they send it back. Uh, but this was like day three and they hadn't done anything yet. They hadn't contacted me yet. So I contacted them and I, it, it was easy. It, it was wicked easy. I mean, there was no hassle with it other than the fact that I think FedEx should have contacted me. Um, but they emailed me the form. I filled out the form. I emailed it back. Uh, this was a process that took like 15, 20 minutes between the phone call, them emailing it to me, me filling out, me emailing it back. And you, and within an hour or two, it was released from customs in Anchorage, Alaska, and it was on its merry way again. So it would have arrived a couple days earlier had it not been for that delay. So again, I ordered it on the 12th. I got it on the 18th. That's six days. I probably could have had it in four days, maybe five. Um, that same day, October 12th, I ordered Amazon items. They still have not shipped yet. Six days later, and Amazon has not shipped them yet. Now, when I ordered, this is another thing that really annoys me with Amazon, and it's been taking place for a couple years now, pretty much since COVID. Um, it, it gives you, like... If you order in three hours and 42 minutes, you can get it on umpty squat date, right? So it gives you this date when you're going to get it, if you order it by that date. When you go to your shipping cart, it tells you a range of dates instead. So in this particular case, it gave me a range of October 19th to October 25th. Again, I ordered this on the 12th, and they gave a range date of October 19th to October 25th. As soon as I hit that purchase button, and I went back in to look at my order. All the dates had updated to arriving October 25th. That window of 19 to 25 October disappeared. And instead it was arriving October 25th. So they give themselves almost two weeks to ship your item. Well, okay, 10 days. Actually, no. The 12th to the 25th is 13 days. So they give themselves two weeks to get off their ass and ship your items and i'm just fed up with that i'm fed up with the smoke and mirrors that they use um you know showing you when you're looking at the item that you can get it by this date and then when you get to your cart it gives you this range date which is further out and then when you actually purchase it that last date on the range date suddenly becomes the day it's going to arrive uh, Christmas time, I had items that didn't ship, ship for over three weeks. They literally did not ship for over three weeks. And this is when I still had Amazon Prime. Um, and I know Christmas time is crazy, but, you know, when you order something the first week in December, the first five days of December, you kind of expect with Amazon, you should be able to have it by Christmas. There were packages I didn't get until the second week of January. That's inexcusable. I'm not giving... Bezos any more of my money. I'm not giving Amazon any more of my money. I'm done. Um, anyway, enough about, rant about Amazon. <clears throat> um, so anyway, after all that rambling, uh, I am going to show you the box and then we'll start opening it. So. I'll take this down out of the way. now and this is the box 
So, okay, so the whole thing on the shipping, I will tell you that uh, we, uh, with the shipping from, oh, I got my little knife off of here. With the shipping from, um, with the shipping from Hobonichi, oops, if you order $250 worth of stuff, you get free shipping. Um, and I thought, well, that's insane. I'll never spend $250. Huh? Guess what I did? Um, now, I did because I ordered Christmas presents. So there are Christmas presents in here. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll kind of open them, open them or not. But, ooh. Okay. So I'm going to set everything aside, and then I'll start taking everything out one at a time. Okay. Oh, should I put the thing back up? Oh, no, I'll wait for a minute for that. So the first thing I got was the Stapo. Now, apparently this stands for standing pouch, so I have not figured out why it's two Ps. Um, I, I, I don't understand that, because standing and pouch... I, I don't get it. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. Uh, I'm not a, a, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a huge Hobonichi person. I mean, literally, this is the first order I've ever made. But I thought this was adorable. And I thought it was perfect for putting my journaling stuff in. Uh... And, uh, and I'll explain in a, in a minute why this small pouch is going to work for me. So it's got this big pocket back here. And it's got these two pockets here. It's got a smaller pocket and a smaller pocket. This comes undone if you want to do that. Um, I, I would not because I would want to keep pens standing up in this thing. But I think this is the perfect size for journaling supplies just around the house, uh, mostly in bed. And let me explain why. I use my gallon leather extra large medic bag for journaling supplies all the time. This is what I always use. Um, you know, I love it. Um, I, I have it here on my desk all the time or I take it out to my desk in the great room. Um, it's great for when I travel in the camper van. Um, it, it's just great for all kinds of things. But the one thing it isn't great for <clears throat> is journaling in bed because it just doesn't, it doesn't sit up on the bed. It falls over and it's kind of in the way between the dog, the cat and me. Um, so I thought this would be perfect because it could just fit enough items for me to have uh, when I'm journaling at night. Now, I'll, I'm going to add a little bit more information to that because as you can see from some of my journals, I'm not very good about keeping them up to date. I like journaling every single day. Let me check that camera here. Okay, we're still good. So I'm not good about journaling every single day because I just, I'm just not. The only times I've been really good about journaling like every single day is when I was journaling at night when I went to bed, like when I was doing these and when I was doing the watercolor, you know, I would, I would do it every single night and usually I did it in bed. And with watercolor, it was really easy because I don't have all this journaling stuff. I just have my watercolor palette. And I would have this thing right here. Um, I have a cloth over it right now because otherwise it's shiny and it'll glare on the camera. But I have this thing right here on my bed with me. And I have my book and my watercolors and the water and everything. And it all works fine. So I want to be more... I want to be better about journaling every single day. Uh, it... It just sort of, I don't know, I enjoy doing it, and it's a nice, relaxing thing to do. 
um, I've started being a little more, I don't want to use the word honest in it, but I've started being a little more real with it. And I'll write things that bother me or have annoyed me or whatever. And I used to not do that. And I feel like that's really the way to do it is to just let everything off your chest. And so that, you know, you can just move on. Um, and with the Hobonichi cousin, I've decided instead of all these, you know, different colors every single day and, and all this, all this stuff that instead I'm going to do a much more calming journal in the sense that I'm going to use all the same color palette for the month. Um, I understand that the Hobonichi each month is a different color, the print. So what I'm going to try to do is come close to matching that. And that means for an entire month, I'm only going to need one fountain pen, maybe two, um, um, oh, what are they called? Oh, good heavens. Um, oh, I can't even think what it's called. Uh, sort of like the calligraphy, calligraphy markers, the double pointed uh, markers. Um, I'm only going to need a couple of those, you know, one fountain pen that has a specific color ink in it, a few stickers, a few washi tapes. I'm not going to need that much stuff. Uh, you know, a little glue stick to glue stuff in if I have ephemera. Um, and I'm not going to worry about, obviously, the ephemera matching the color. But stickers, washi tape, pens are all going to match that color palette for that month. So I only need a very limited amount of stuff in here that I'll have for the whole month. Um, you know, and it can easily sit on my bed with me while I, while I do my journal. So that's the story on why I ordered this Stapo. And I think it's adorable. A lot of people complained about how small it is. Um, I looked at the measurements and I knew it was going to be kind of small and I knew it was going to be perfect for what I wanted. Uh, a lot of other people have also said they're worried about these handles or this handle um, that the Velcro will come open. But I don't think they realized um, when they were looking at it, these were comments made before they actually ordered it. Um, but it was so small, so you're not going to have like, unless you're putting bricks in here, it's it's not going to be that heavy. So there you go. Step up. I love it. Okay, what do I got next? What's next in the box? Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. So next in the box is the cover for the cousin that I ordered. And this is the PTY Tokyo and Bloom Rabbit. Uh, so, first of all, I will tell you that this is not my first choice, uh, and was not even my second choice. It's actually my third choice. Um, so I'll put a picture up here right now. My first choice was the Leather Silent Night. I thought that was stunning, um, and I really did like it, uh, but it was sold out already. I, again, I didn't order till October 12th, so, you know, I'm not too concerned about the fact that there was so much stuff already sold out. Um... The next one that was my second choice was the Hirokoto, uh, Hiroko Kubota Tokyo Metronome. Uh, again, show you a picture up here. That was my second choice for a cover. Um, and then, so this was my third choice, but honestly, after I ordered it, you know, I've gone back to the website a couple times to look at stuff. And the more I looked at it, the more I really, really loved it. Um, I like gray anyway. I, you know, a lot of my walls in my house are gray. I wear a lot of gray and black all the time. And I don't know, I just thought, you know, it's got these little, I don't know if you can see these, the little fuzzy bits. Um, these are the rabbits. There's two rabbits there and the rest are flat, oh, rabbits, rabbits, flowers, flowers, flowers. I like that, that I have two rabbits on the front. Oh, I got two rabbits on the spine. Oh, that's awesome. And then two rabbits matching on the back, on the edge. So I'm excited about this. I, uh, you know, despite it not being my first or second choice when I first looked at the website, um, I can now say it's clearly my second choice. Um, the leather one, obviously leather is something I always enjoy because I obviously get lots of gallon leather items, but this one is actually very beautiful. Um, so it's got the two page markers and yes they do have 
the weights on the end. I saw a few of these things that people were unboxing and they didn't have the weights on the end of the ribbon markers. And I kind of really like the weights on them. I, I just, you know, I, otherwise you're, I don't know, they're sort of flailing around all the time. So you get all these pockets here. This is a little bit about the company. So PYT is a Tokyo based apparel project fo focused on handmade apparel. Um, the fashion line began after being invited to the Vancouver Fashion Week in 2018, where they held a local runway show. Um, so yeah, so I actually really do like this uh, material. Um, oh, so this pocket goes this way and ends, but that pocket goes all the way in. That's bizarre. And then this pocket, the pen loop, and it's got this huge pocket that you could really put stuff in. And I like that the pink is not that prominent. I'm not a really big, I'm not a pink girly. Um, so, little Hobonichi tag. I hope I'm all in camera here. <clears throat> Let me make sure I am again. I'm sorry, I, I have this weird setup in here and I really don't know what I'm doing. I really don't know how much. Oh yeah, I'm still in camera. All right. Um, okay. That's beautiful. Okay, so this next item, um, A and M, if you were watching, shut the video off now and don't watch any further because this next item is a Christmas present for one of you. So this is the, um, the drawer Ane. So it's fairly big. You know what? I think customs, I wonder if customs opened my box because everything I've seen everyone pull out, there's this tag um, that goes up through the packaging in the, on this end here, like this would have been in the bag this way, and the tag is attached to this, and you have to tear the bag or cut the tag off, either one, to get it out. So that makes me feel like Customs maybe opened all of this, um, and my little, this little thing is no longer on here to protect it. I'll have to figure out how to get that back on because this is a Christmas present. But again, this is the um, the drawer Ane. Um, and I thought it would be perfect for uh, the person I'm giving this to to use as a wallet because it will also fit their phone. Um, they always just use a clutch wallet and every clutch wallet they find their phone won't fit in there and so this one will obviously fit a huge phone um, you've got all these pockets card pockets for um, cards and you've got a zipper pocket that would have you know for change and stuff so I think this is perfect for a wallet to also include your phone and your keys. So that's what this is for. And I'll be honest, I really did want the large drawer in this design. Uh, this is called, Liberty, this is Liberty Fabrics Decadent Blooms. It almost feels, it feels like a stretchy fabric. Uh, it's not like a, linen or cotton it feels more like a in fact it is stretchy if you pull on it there but i think it's a beautiful fabric and i love the little maroon tassel on it um but they did not it was it was sold out the the liberty the liberty uh large drawer pouch in this pattern was sold out um the other large um drawer I would have considered uh, is the same pattern that I was going to buy for the other person for a Christmas present. 
and I know they would not have appreciated me having having uh, the same pattern, so I didn't get it. I'm bummed I don't get the Hobonichi sticker. Um, that's a bummer. I would have liked to put it in my journal for today. But my box arrived. Okay. There's I think 8 million people have read this quote um, <laughs> on their, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on their uh, unboxing video, so I'm not going to bother, but it's there if you want to read it. Okay. Okay, again, I'm going to put this box to the side. And this is the other, this is the small drawer pouch in the whisker cap pattern. And again, I would have liked to have bought the large drawer pouch for myself. I am not going to take this off, but that's just a little strap. A, um, I wish, I wish the Ane had that. I wish the Ane had a strap. Um, I might make one. Um, I can probably buy a fabric that will match one of these colors here, and I'll make a strap and put it on here but this is again none of these have those tags on them that were on everyone else's unboxing so i feel like i don't know it's weird but this the cat whisker is so cute look it's got these little fluffy it's part of the weaving these, these little very little fluffy whiskers oh this poor cat's head got cut off um so there's a pocket here and then on the inside you have couple little pockets here and you see they're kind of um, they're they're meant to put stuff in they've got they're not like flat you know you see what I mean they've got they've got extra space in them to actually put things uh, and then this zippered pocket and it has the uh, elastics in there for whatever you want to hold in there Little, little ideas of what to do with it. So I think the person getting this will like this as well. Um, they'll probably use it for tech stuff like headphones and cords and things like that. Um, So I know I ordered, I mean, obviously I ordered a lot in the sense that I spent so much money, but quite frankly, um, I didn't order a lot in regards to, so this is the Hobonichi Techo Cousin, um, English edition, January start. So this is my first Hobonichi. I'm excited. Um, I have, I have had, uh, notebooks, like little passport size notebooks that have Tomei River paper in them. Uh, but this, the Hobonichi for this year, uh, for 2020, or this upcoming year, 2024, they have a new Tomei River paper called, uh, Tomei River S. Um, and so I'm excited to feel that paper. Oh, yes, very smooth. I, I don't know if you know anything about papers, but Tome River paper is extremely thin. Um, extremely thin. I mean, look at how, I mean, this book is not that thick. And it's got, um, it's got 2024, 2023, 2025, the overview of the year. Then it's got a, 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 uh, overview of the year by month <clears throat> oh wait there's the first oh, I, I missed the page Wh why does it start in July January start from January 
to December of 2024. Why does this start in July, though? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the month has December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and then January, February, and March. I'm just confused by this. I don't, I don't think this can, oh, there we go, there we go. I, I wondered if I had two pages stuck together, but I couldn't seem to get them unstuck. But see, again, this paper is so thin. So January through June, and then July through December, and then for the months, they have January through March of 2025 for future planning on a monthly calendar. And then start the weeks. And these are uh, vertical, vertical weekly spreads. Um, and that goes all the way to the end of the year. Uh, and because last day of the year is on a Tuesday, you get just the rest of the week in the weekly. So through January 5th. And then you've got just a, a grid page, um, a blank page, a totally blank page, and then January 1st. And then here starts your daily pages every day on a different page. Um, and this is what I mean by the colors. So January is this, um, January is this rusty color. February is this brown. March is this muted purple. April is this sort of dark, dusky, dusty pink. May is this olive color, olive green. June is a hmm, sort of a dusty forest green, dusty light forest green. July is a teal. Uh, August is a sort of grayish purple bluish, bluish gray, but yeah. Um, September is another brown color, more of a rust color. October is a purple, November is a green, and then December is like a sort of a burnt red. <clears throat> and then after the last page of the dailies, you have a Last page of the dailies, you have a couple pages of just grid paper. Uh, this is a time timetable schedule. Like if you have a set work schedule, I guess you could put it in here. Um, another graph paper. Um, favorites, list of favorites. You know, you can either do favorite books, favorite music, favorite movie, favorite books, favorite music, favorite food. Uh, I guess it would be shopping, favorite shopping places. Uh, I don't know what the applause would be. <clears throat> and then my 100 list. This is a list to make a my 100 of what you want to accomplish this year. You can use it for anything you want. Um, I don't know what I'll use it for. I'll have to think long and hard about that. Um, an interview with them myself. So there's little, little uh, prompts for yourself. Seasonal sweets to make at home recipes. This looks yummy. I will definitely try these. Um, caring for your eyes, which I think is a bit bizarre, but hey, whatever. Words to remember. Write down memorable phase phrases you encounter throughout the year. And then a daily checkoff list. You know, maybe you could use this for every day you journal or every day you exercise or every day you drink, I don't know, 64 ounces of water or whatever you wanted to use this for. You could use it as some kind of tracker book for sure. Um, gifts, addresses, some personal notes, 
serial numbers. Uh, so every Hobonichi Tetsho is, uh, has a serial number in it. So mine is 2,107,721. So there we go, the Hobonichi Tetsho. Now, one of the things I ordered from Amazon was a clear cover for that, for this, um, because my plan is to um, cut a piece of cardstock in a, you know, a, a pretty pattern that I like, and and then put this in the plastic cover, and then I'll have that pretty pattern. Um, so, but I'll slide it in here for now. Uh, and there's plenty of room, so I know that the plastic cover I ordered will will fit in here. Uh, it almost matches that. Awesome. Okay, there we go. Oh, I forgot to tell you, too. So the Hobonichis all have these Japanese quotes at the... Well, okay. The regular Hobonichi has quotes in Japanese at the bottom of every page. And uh, a lot of people don't like these quotes at the bottom. They They... You know, they cover it up with washi or stickers or whatever, and I don't know, I think it's kind of nice, but I think because I got the English version, they're in English, so I think they matter a little more because I can actually read them and I know what they say. Uh, you've got a little monthly view here. Uh, so on these daily, oh, so another thing I want to go over. On the weekly pages, it starts at 5 a.m. and it goes all the way through midnight to 4 a.m. So you've literally got 24 hours on the weekly spread. And you can, you know, sort of cut that up however you want. Um, and then on the, on the, uh, let's go to a page that has a little bit darker color maybe. I don't know, can you read that one better? I'm going to go with this one. On the daily pages, you've got this little area here. I don't know if you can see that line. It's sort of blocked out, separate from the rest of the page. A lot of people use this for a task list, a to-do list for the day, and then the rest of it is journaling. Um, I don't think I'll do that. I, I, I don't think I'll put a daily task list in the daily section because the only day, the only time of day I'm going to look at the daily page is at night when I go to journal. Um, I think for me. Having my task list in the weekly is much better. You know, I'll probably just have this open on my desk to the week. And, you know, like I said, I usually write tasks in the morning of what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to, okay, I'm going to stop the video. Actually, I won't, yeah, I'm going to stop the video for a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about too was, um, you know, this cover was fairly expensive but i have no plans to get another cover next year i just I, there's no reason for me to get another cover this should last me for years but the other thing is for work i use my gallon leather which has got my initials on it gallon leather <clears throat> it's this beautiful uh blue very soft leathery feel it's uh i don't know probably <clears throat> five, six years old now, <coughs> excuse me, and this is what I use for work. So for work, I use a grid steno sheet, and every day I write, you know, in the morning when I come in, I write the list of everything I have to do based on the emails that came in the night before, and then throughout the day I'll add, you know, if I migrate something, I'll put a red, I, I use the Pilot razor points, I love these for this, for this, um, uh, I use just black for normal things. I use green for actual schedule things, like if I have a Zoom call or a meeting or something like that. I use red to migrate, and I use blue for, um, like, I don't know. I can't remember what I use blue for. I don't use blue very often, but anyway. Um, and so the list grows throughout the day as emails come in, and I check stuff off and whatever, and I migrate or whatever. And then at the end of the day... I just flip to a new page and the next morning I start on a new page. So this is what I use for work and it's jam full of pens and stuff that I use for work and, and other things I use for work. And my plan is, I only have a couple of more years before I retire, but my plan is if I continue with the Hobonichi Cousin, uh, this is an A5 size. So despite the fact that I was, you know, disappointed I couldn't get the leather cover, 
I think in the end it's actually best because I would prefer a zippered cover and the leather one uh, in Silent Night did not zip closed. It, it had a flap that came over and snapped closed and I really don't like that. I would much prefer a zippered cover and this is probably what I will switch to um, once I retire. This thing gets beat up something fierce. I drop it all the time. I spill the stuff on it. I, it goes in and out of my bag every day, you know, you know, in, in my bag in the morning, out of my bag at work, and then back in my bag at night. And then when I get home, it comes back out of my bag because I usually work at home as well. So, um, I just love this. And despite this being five or six years old, it looks great. Um, I love the way leather ages anyway. So the fact that I didn't get a leather one, I'm really not too bothered by. And this one is absolutely beautiful now that I see it in person. I truly do love it. So I'm very happy with this. So then, uh, let's see. What else have we got? Um, yeah. Now, the other thing is, I'm not big into consumerism, okay? I mean, I don't know. I think the planner community is just over the top with it. I mean, I see people with their Hobonichi hauls. And they're ordering three or four planners. How I, I'm trying to figure out how to go from two, you know, a journal and a planner to, to one book because I don't want to have to have two books. And these people have three or four planners, and I, I'm not judging them. I understand I'm not judging them. I just I don't know how they do it. I couldn't juggle all that. I would not be capable of juggling all that. I would end up with four empty planners at the end of the year. That's what would happen. Um, so me switching to something that's just in one journal is my attempt at being very intentional that I will journal every single day and I will use this every single day for for to-do lists and stuff the only caveat to that is that I uh, when I'm working on a major project at home I tend to use little like little field note type notebooks um, for the project I'm working on because that's a very detailed to-do list because I don't want to forget anything, especially when I'm running electric lines and uh, plumbing lines and all that. I don't want to, you know, when I was building the apartment, you know, I, I had so many electrical outlets and so many switches and I wanted to make sure that I did all, all in the right order to be the most logical for going down to the uh, breaker box. So, you know, every single little thing, you know, run the line from, you know, the outlet under the west window to the left side of the north wall. You know, just everything was detailed out to that extent, every little item that I had to do. And so for those big tasks like that, when I'm doing a renovation project, I tend to use a little small book that I just write everything down in. Because as I'm doing it, I can say, oh, wait a minute, I missed something here, you know, and, and I, I just, I'm very detail oriented when it comes to that. Uh, right now I'm building a laundry room and so again I have a little small book that every little tiny thing is in there and that way as I'm looking at it, I'm going oh no wait I can't do that I have to do this first that's on page two I have to I have to put that one on page two back over to page one because so anyway <clears throat> um so this is going to be for everything and and I hope I can work it out that way Okay, and then I got a pencil board. Now for the pencil board, uh, again, this was not my first choice. Um, my first choice was actually, uh, let me see. This was, my first choice was Love It Panda. Uh, I'll put the picture of it up here. But that was already sold out in the A5 size, which is what I need for this book. And to be honest, um, I quite like this one anyway. I mean, it was, you know, this was the second choice by only a very tiny little bit. Um, so I'm okay with it. I just, you know, I think uh, the only reason this would be a second choice is because the color on the back. I am not a green person at all. I don't like green in any form or fashion. Um, so uh, the Love It Panda was a blue on the back. So, you know, but it's a pencil board. Who cares, right? So that can just stick in here. Um, I typically don't use a pencil board. I had a pencil board for my Traveler's Notebook and I rarely used it. But this book is so, it, it's gonna get so chunky. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be hard to write on. The, not 
not this page. This page will always be easy to write on. Uh, but this page will be harder to write on because there'll be all this chalk behind it. Um, and then also this paper is very, very thin. But again, it's Tomei River paper, so it tends not to bleed. Uh, no matter what you're using, I tend to use fountain pens. I probably will use fountain pens for all the writing in here. I'll use, you know, the Tombow. Tombow, that's what they are. I'll use the Tombows for, you know, highlighting stuff. Um, but otherwise, I'll be using fountain pens. And the fountain pens don't usually bleed. They do ghost. Uh, but just in case, it, it makes sure that nothing will go through and nothing will end up on your next page. Um, so this pencil board is uh, Tomitaro Makino, um, an illustrator. Uh, <clears throat> You can, and, and this is a, a scan from one of his uh, sketches, uh, so hence the torn edge and all that. Uh, and you can see the T, uh, T for Tomitaro, and then Makino. Um, so I think this plan is cool looking. It almost looks like, when I first glance at it, um, when I was just scrolling through the website and, you know, quickly looking down to see what caught my eye, I tend to look that way. I scroll it really fast because something will catch my eye. This one actually caught my eye because I thought it was a Venus flytrap. I know that's not what it is, but as it flew by, I thought, was that a Venus flytrap? Uh, because I would have been all over if it was. It would have been my first choice, most definitely, if it was a Venus flytrap. But anyway, uh, so there we go. So the pencil board. So next up for the planner, I got these um, landscape index tabs. Uh, I like them because they don't, they're not going to stick out too far and they're not like square where the edges, the corners are always catching on things and everything. They're just nice and rounded. And this one is called, uh, uh, it's called Waves, but this one says High Tide, which is funny because on the website it's called Waves and then here it says High Tide. <laughs> Anyway, um, maybe that's the company because it says high tide here and then BL for probably blue, whatever. Anyway, um, I got these to index the, um, I don't know if I'll index the dailies or the weeklies. Uh, probably the dailies. I'll probably index the dailies. I don't know. I, I may not use them at all, but I thought while I was placing the order and I was trying to go to 250, I might as well order them. So... This is probably what held up my my uh, my stuff in customs was the fact that I b bought three pep preppies and you know the ink cartridges are in them not not um, not burst open yet <clears throat> but I actually uh, I have a black preppy actually I have two preppies because I have a black and I have a clear. Um, oh, the black one is in my sketchbook because uh, in my watercolor kit because this is what I use for watercolor sketching all the time is my preppy with carbon ink in it. Um, you know, permanent ink, um, water waterproof permanent ink. And I love the preppy actually. I love how it um, it writes it. You know, it can sit there for months and you pick it up and boom, it just starts writing immediately. It's not finicky at all. It's not, um, it just takes a lot of abuse. Abuse in the sense that, you know, my other fountain pens, my really nice fountain pens, I would never link, leave ink in them that long because <clears throat> it would be a major pain to clean them out. This one just doesn't seem to care. It just keeps on going no matter what, no matter how long it sits there and I don't use it. Um, because I switch back and forth between... I've switched back and forth between a preppy and a magna um, pen tip, um, dip pen tip with carbon ink. And um, so sometimes I don't use this for months at a time. But anyway, um, they have these three available on, on the website. Um, I'm not too keen about the pink color as far as the ink goes, but I will use it up. Uh, but mainly, mainly I'll probably put uh, fountain pen, pen, fountain pen ink in here, and I'll these three will be the ones that I use with my um, 
with my cousin and just you know I'll have black ink in one all the time and then I'll have you know one of them with the current color ink I'm using for that month <clears throat> whatever uh, but these are what held it up in customs I know um, these might have also held them up in customs because I saw one person who ordered these they didn't order any other pens but they ordered these and their package got held up in customs so these are the uh, Sailor uh, Shikori uh, brush pins, twin tip, and this is in the color Autumn. So um, they've got four color sets, I think, four color sets. Uh, this is the Autumn color set, and it was the one I liked the most. Um, there was a color in one of the other sets that I would have rather had than this uh, yellow orange, but um, this one at least had these four colors that I really did like. So um, again, these are the brush tip on one end and then a little fine tip um, on the other. So I thought I'd try these out. Uh, I like the tombos, but the tombos are so freaking long. I mean, they're just so long. Um, let me see. Let me grab one of my tombos. So, like, look at look at how long these are compared to these. I mean, that's that's a huge difference as far as pencil cases go and stuff. You know, these just don't fit in a lot of pencil cases because they're just so long. Um, yes, I do like them, but I don't like the fact that they're so long. So I thought I'd try the Sailors and see how I like them. We're nearing the end here. Okay, all we have left now are the freebies. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All we got left now is the freebies. So apparently Hobonichi gives out uh, a free pen for every planner you order um, each year. So some of these people had five, six pens in their boxes. I only have the one because I only ordered the one planner. Um, I will say that I've seen in some of the videos that I watched, like I said, I went down this huge rabbit hole of YouTube Hobonichi unboxing videos. And I will say that um, last year's pen was a hideous color and i'm so glad that this is the first year that i've decided to order hobonichi because i kind of like this i'm not a brown person i'm not a green person but these are muted enough that they're not in your face um so this is the uh, uni jet pen which apparently is the pen that everyone loves to write on tomoe river paper with it's the three colors so it's got red blue and black and what's really cool about this one is not only is this tip clear and you can see what color you have out open without looking at your end of your pen, not that that's a big deal, but you can also see, I don't know if you can see it, there's a clear band right here and you'll, I'm assuming you'll be able to see, you know, when your cartridge is getting low on ink, I guess, I don't know. We'll see. I guess I'll find out. Um, I don't know how much I'll use this pen because I'm not, you know, uh, like I said in my in my journal, I'll be using a fountain pen. Although the journal part, the daily part, I'll probably use a fountain pen. But I have a feeling that in the monthly and weekly section, I'll be using a regular pen just because it'll be, you know, easier to grab in the in a moment when I decide, oh, I need to write something down, you know, when I'm at my desk working. Uh, and I mean when I'm at my desk working at home, because I won't be carting this back and forth to work every day. My, my cousin, it'll just stay at home. Um, you know, I'll just write a little post-it note or something at work if I think of something that needs to get put in. Okay, so then also if you ordered specific planners, um... Like, I don't think people that ordered the Weeks got this. I think if you ordered the Cousin, uh, the Techo, any of the Techos, I think if you ordered any of the Techos, you got this. And this is a free little bag. I'm going to show you now the picture of the four bags they made. Oh, 
believe it or not, this is the thing I'm most nervous about opening because I really like the Orangat Onagari one. Um, I make a lot of Japanese meals. Like, I go on weeks long binges of just Japanese meals, uh, bentos for lunch and Japanese meals for dinner and the full blown Japanese meal, you know, the bowl of rice, the cup of soup, the side in a little dish, another side in a little dish and another a dish with the main stuff. You know, I, I have all the dishes and I make Japanese meals for weeks on end at home. And then, you know, and then I go off that kick for a few days and I'm right back to it very quickly. Um, and I love making the bento boxes. And a lot of times I actually get up really, really early in the morning because I actually prepare everything for the bento box that morning. Um, anyway, so I'm really hoping for the onigiri. Um, I make onigiri myself for bento lunches all the time. I, I only usually just use tuna, uh, stuff them with tuna. <clears throat> My second choice is the pretzel. Um, I don't like yellow and I don't like orange, so I'm hoping I don't get those colors. But it's just a little freebie bag, so it doesn't really matter. But, oh, I can already see I got the yellow. Ah, bummer. Okay, how are you? Well, I'm fine, thank you for asking. Um, actually, I kind of like this canvas. Nobody's ever talked about what kind of canvas this is, but this is actually really a heavy-duty canvas. Hmm. Um, I've given some thought to what I would use this for. Um, and actually I'm almost kind of glad I got one that I don't really like, uh, because I think what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to put it in, I'm going to slide it right in here in my stapo, and this is going to be my little trash bag when I'm journaling at night in bed. I can just set it up there. I can just put trash in it all the little clippings and cuttings and whatever and then you know stuff it in there because there won't be much in there stuff it in there and then the next morning when i get out of bed i can dump that so that's what i'm going to do with my little bag and so i'm kind of glad that it's not one that i really really like because i'm not sure if i got the onigiri one or the pretzel one i'd be able to use it for trash <laughs> so anyway i think that's cute or a cute use for it and I, I'm actually kind of impressed with the canvas on this. This is actually pretty, pretty sturdy canvas. So, all right. Well, that does it for my Hobonichi haul. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I have enjoyed watching the dozens and dozens of them that I've watched. Um, so, I know these aren't out of their packaging, and I know that's probably glaring something fierce, but. Um, we're going to just lay everything out here for one final look. And I appreciate you watching. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of excited to start using this. I've been doing pretty good about journaling uh, lately. Um, you know, like, like, try to do it every day. Uh, some days, sometimes I don't do it every day, but I usually do a, I, I do do a catch up. So I make sure every day has been, there's been something written in every day. So there we go. There's all the stuff, all the stuff. And I can't believe all of that was $250. That's insane because that's not really a lot of stuff, but there it is. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.